Happy Monday and welcome back to The Average Fisherman, everybody. So, today's going to be a good controversial episode. No coffee, no martinis today. I'm drinking the good old Gatorade because it is hot as balls outside. And the weather here is just miserable these last two weeks and there's no end in sight. Anyway, as you can tell by the topic of the video, um, I'm, I decided to do this because I get just tons and tons and tons of comments. Um, most of them you guys never see because frankly I remove them from the channel uh, almost immediately. But it's gotten to the point where there's a lot of sponsored channels and it's mostly the sponsored channels to be truthful with you that are just giving really bad and outright false advice to people fishing and people believe them because they're one of those super sponsor channels and they think like well they have sponsors so they must know what they're doing and that's not the case at all so I'm gonna go over some of the common uh, things that are promoted on these these sponsor channels that are just outright wrong and you should not take their advice so how can I say take my advice and not take theirs very simple because I'm not being paid to give you bad advice. They are. They're getting paid to say whatever their sponsors are telling them to say. I don't have that problem. I can tell you my actual opinions and give you actual facts backed up by research and sponsors be damned because I am not sponsored. And that is the reason why I'm not sponsored. I've said that since day one on this channel. The primary reason why, and I've been approached for sponsorships. I'm just wanna I'm wanna level with you guys. I know I only have like 500 or 470 uh, subscribers, but I have already been approached for sponsorships, and I have turned them all down. Probably, uh, I don't want to lie to you guys. Um, 13, 14 sponsor um, offers, and I have turned all of them down because I want to be able to come here and tell my viewers the truth, without misleading you or having to feel like I have to give you false information just to get a few extra bucks. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm not. I'm an honest guy. I've always been an honest guy. I'm going to continue to be an honest guy. And my channel is an honest channel. So, you know, the thing that I see the most, all right, the number one thing that I see that is just really bad advice, like terrible advice, is bass fishing with 65 pound braid. That number, the 65 pound, got started by Roland Martin, okay? I love the guy. And a lot of people just shit their pants and went, holy cow, are you really going to disagree with Roland Martin? Yes, I am. And the reason I am is because I'm right, okay? <laughs> I'm just going to be truthful with you guys. Just because he's Roland Martin, yes, he's the most bass fishing as some bitch on the face of the planet since, you know, uh, Moby Dick was a minnow. But, you know, the fact of the matter is he's wrong, okay? And when you're wrong, you're wrong about things. I know that there's a lot of confirmation bias in fishing, you know, and stuff like that. I, I'm not privy to those kind of things because I work in the medical field, and I'm very used to having old information be replaced by newer, better information, even if it contradicts the old standards, right? Meaning, like, we used to do things one way, and everybody believed, like, this is the best way to do things. Now comes out new information that says, in actuality, that was the wrong thing to do. We should be doing this instead. And because that's now the best practices and the outcomes are better, everybody gravitates towards that now. And I'm very used to that because of my profession. I'm in the medical profession. You know, confirmation bias in the medical profession is not a thing. You know, we, we're very accepting of new scientifically proven evidence. That's, that's the key there. When new studies are done or new, you know, research is done that proves that the older ways are not as good anymore, we gravitate to the newer ways despite our personal beliefs or whatever. So we're very used to that. And one of the biggest examples of that is the 65-pound braid deal. You should never be fishing bass with 65-pound braid, period. Okay, there is zero reason to do it. There is no benefits to it. There are only downsides to it. And I have no idea why that's become a thing. Um, you know, as to back up my statement, I, I, I don't really like promoting other paid or for-profit sites or videos on my videos, but I'm going to in this case because they're right. And that's the Salt Strong guys. They go out fishing redfish, bull redfish, 
with 15, 10 and 15 pound braided line um, and have no problems catching them left and right. Uh, if you go watch any of their videos, you'll see what I'm talking about. 10 and 15 pound braid. Zero reason to go bass fishing with 65 pound. The heaviest line that I have on any of my reels, and it's just a standard, so that way I don't have to change braided lines or anything like that, is I use 20 pound. 20 pound Hercules no, fee, no fade braid is what I use on my, my casting bass reels. As a rule of thumb, you do not need 65 pound braid. There is never a circumstance where 65 pound braid is necessary for bass fishing. There's not really any circumstance with saltwater fishing where 65 pound braid is a necessity unless you're catching tuna, okay? And that, you know, that's 400 pound fish. So get that out of your head. There is no reason to use 65 pound anything when you're bass fishing, <laughs> right? That is one of the dumbest myths I've seen and that whole idea of, well, you get, the, you get the strong braid so you can yank them out the weeds. I have never had, never, this is, this is a blanket statement because it's true, never had a 20 pound braid break off, never. And, I've, and I fish in the swamp. You guys see where I fish, I fish in the swamp. And I throw my pit, my pit boss and my frogs and stuff like that through tree branches over logs and all kind of stuff to get to what's on the other side you have seen me do it and i've never had a break off even with like an eight pound fish on the other side okay you don't need 65 pound braid stop using 65 pound braid the the lighter braids are more sensitive fact they cast further fact and you get more line on your reel so if you do happen to catch something big you're not going to get spooled fact okay stop using 65 pound braid it's a dumbass idea I know a lot of channels promote it, including Roland Martin. Sorry, Roland. I love you, guy, but you're wrong. 65-pound braid is dumb, okay? The second thing, this is the second most prevalent myth in bass fishing and is also something that is backed up by the Salt Strong guys and multiple others, okay? It's just these high-profile sponsored sites that give people shitty advice because they, they want them to support their sponsors and then link to them on their YouTube site so they get a cut of the proceeds. When you're buying equipment, rods and reels, okay? This is rods and reels. When you're buying hardware to go fishing, I guess I should put it. Always put most of the money in the rod. The rod is what catches your fish. The reel holds the line. That's it, okay? So if you have, and I've said this before, if you have a $100 budget for a rod and reel combo, okay, assuming that you're not going to a site like Abu Garcia sites and finding a rod and reel combo that costs 100 bucks and buying that. If you're buying separate components, a separate rod, and a separate reel to put together and make your own combo, you should be spending $75 on the rod and $25 on the reel, period, okay? I know a lot of other sites a lot of other sites that are super sponsored sites tell you get the more expensive reel and a cheaper rod that is wrong it is bad advice it is incorrect advice spend most of your money on a good rod the reel is just there to hold the line and to crank in the fish and I'm telling you right now you could put any shitty rod or any shitty reel that you want on like a Fantasies to X rod and you're still going to catch more fish than you would if you put like a Xenon reel on a fiberglass Shakespeare rod that you bought at Walmart, okay? It's just a fact. The rod catches your fish. The reel is there just to crank the line in, okay? I don't, I don't understand. You know, I get lots of comments from people, like I said, that are removed, like, you give like ass backward advice. I'm not the one giving the ass backward advice, okay? Let me just level with you guys. The other people that you're listening to that are telling you the opposite are the ones that are giving you ass backward advice. The truth of the matter is I'm giving real true advice because I'm not being paid to say bullshit. I'm giving you the truth. Spend the money on the rod. The real is secondary. Okay. Third thing. And this one really gets me. And I get comments about this every time uh, I post something about it. So once and for all. Okay, I've said this before too, once and for all. Fluorocarbon line is bullshit. Okay, there has been too much data at this point, and every time there's a study done about it, the results come out the same. At this point, I'm not lying to you guys, you can Google it. There's been 30 to 40 studies done on this already. It's been mathematically disproven, it has been scientifically disproven. Fluorocarbon is bullshit. 
stop using it. It is not less visible than mono and water. It is not. It is also all the drawbacks that you have with fluorocarbon don't outweigh the benefits of the mono. The knot strength isn't as good. The crystalline structure is poor. Once it stretches, it tends to shatter. And yes, shatter is the right word because it's crystalline structure. Um, it's not as resilient. The only benefit to fluorocarbon over mono is that it's slightly more dense, so it transmits vibrations a little bit better than mono does, but it does not, it's not enough of a difference to outweigh the benefits of using a good mono over fluorocarbon. Plus, no matter what kind of mono, no matter what kind of fluorocarbon you use, the memory issues with it are fucking terrible. Okay? This is absolute shit. I'm gonna point it out to you guys. When this first came out, everybody was, oh, you know, Seaguar tattoo, and they had all the ads on YouTube by Seaguar saying, like, we specially formulated this. It has, like, virtually no memory. How much bullshit? Dude, this is one of the worst lines to use as far as memory that I've ever put on a fucking fishing reel, okay? And if you go look, there's a very famous bass fishing YouTuber who did a test on the memory. He, similar to Project Farm, rigged up all these special tools to like figure out like which lines had the worst memory or the like this was one of the worst and it was it's it's like a ridiculous like outrageous price this was at the time when i bought it was the most expensive monofilament type fishing line on the planet because seagar was making the rounds on all the sponsored youtube channels telling everybody no memory with this stuff bro no memory with this stuff that's bullshit and that's why i tell you guys stop listening to the sponsored channels that whole it has virtually no memory what the fuck ever? That stuff coils up like a spring. And anybody and everybody who's honest who has used it has come back and said, like, dude, you are so right. That stuff is garbage. And I'm like, I know it is. That's why you can't listen to sponsored channels. And that's the reason why I'm not going to be sponsored. Because I can come here and say, those the Seaguar guys, they're full of shit about the Tatsu line not having any memory. They're full of shit. And I, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? You know? So I'm just telling you guys. Stop paying so much attention to these bullshit sponsor channels. I, I swear to you guys, if, if I promote something on this channel, it's not because I'm being paid to do it. I'm not sponsored. I don't get paid to do this. I do this out of my own free time. I'm an ER nurse. That's what I do. I do this because I want to help people fish. I want to help people catch fish, you know, and I give honest opinions about the equipment that I use. Regardless of how much it costs or anything like that, I, I, if it works, it works for me. Like, like recently, I know this is one of the things that I, I tell everybody, they're expensive, and I have some stuff laid out on the table here, but I'm telling you, it's better than the cheaper ones in this case, all right? And that's these, these little VMC snap swivels. These are the ones that I use when I'm pan fishing. I know it says 20 pound, but look how tiny those are. The 20 pound ones are the ones that I use for sockele and pan fishing when you see me pan fishing now. These are the ones that are on my, all my saltwater rigs. These are the 30 pounds, okay? Because I'm using 30 pound braid. So I don't need anything stronger than 30. So, you know, the VMC swivels, they may be like massively expensive compared to like the cheap little um, Eagle Claw types, but they work much better. They're smaller, they're less visible in the water, and they work better. So I'm gonna pay the money for something when it's justified. And that's the point of me giving advice to you guys. When it's justified, I will tell you, this is worth the money. When it's not, I'm going to tell you, don't waste your money. And for fuck's sake, don't waste your money on fluorocarbon lines. They have been disproven so many times, it's not, even, it's not even reasonable at this point for people to keep claiming that fluorocarbon is less visible than monofilament. Anybody who does that to you is trying to convince you that the earth is flat because it's been proven multiple times that it's wrong. Fluorocarbon is not less visible in water than clear mono, okay? It's been disproven. It's not true. It's a false statement. It's a lie. Anybody who's saying otherwise, they have no idea what they're talking about. So, getting on to other subjects. When I was talking about two-pound two lines, and why do I use two-pound lines when I go pan fishing, okay? They're, because the diameter, they don't develop memory as bad, the fish can't see it as well, and you can fit more of it on your reels. That's why I like doing it. So, I have a line here that I'm testing that I just saw today. Most of you might have seen this because I hadn't been to Bass Pro in a while, but I picked up a spool of this stuff. 
Okay, this is supposed to be equivalent to trilene XL or XT. I'm sorry, I, I had a brain fart for a second. Trilene XT, but this is two pound, two pound. But I also use this stuff. It's the two pound XL, which is you know equivalent, but two trilene XL, two pound. So I'm going to test these both side by side on identical setups and let you guys know: is this really better than this? You know, you get less of this, which is uh, interesting. Um, let me see, it's 252 meters and this is 300 meters or 330 meters for this. So you get less line here than this and I'm not sure why. So I want to test that out and let you guys know. Um, I understand it's probably not going to be as limp as this and it'll probably develop more memory than this, but I want to see if it's worth it. It is about a dollar cheaper, but you do get less line with this. So I will let you guys know. Um, and that's what I do on this channel. I try things out. If it works, I tell you about it. If it doesn't, I tell you about it. So. The other thing that I went and got today was a couple other packs of my favorite bass lure of all time, the Power Bait Pit Boss. Um, I got this one in Green Pumpkin and I got one in Bama Bug. That's the another thing, which is why I'm showing you guys this stuff. Stop, please stop going out and buying the latest, most seriously expensive, like Gary Yamamoto creature baits or whatever. I don't even use worms anymore, okay? And the truth of the matter is, they don't catch as many fish now as they used to in the past because freaking everybody throws Senkos, okay? The bass aren't stupid. They, they're not smart, but they get conditioned to not bite on those things, okay? So they're not as, they're not as pro, pro, prolific biters on like Senkos anymore than they used to be. When was the last time you guys saw me throw a Senko, right? Um, and I catch fish. I catch a hell of a lot of fish. You know, I use the Power Bait Pit Boss because it's so versatile. You can use it as a swim bait, you can use it as a top water pulled across the top, you can use it as a finesse bait, which is how I normally use it, and it's just a really super versatile lure. But they keep coming out with these new weird shapes of the Gary Yamamoto baits, and they put like six of them in a pack and charge you eight bucks for it. Stop buying stuff like that. That overpriced garbage that everybody gets sponsored to come and tell you like, oh, this is gonna be like your new favorite lure. It's not, it's, it's another poorly designed uh, creature style lure that has so much goddamn salt in it that one fish bites on it and you're going to have to replace it with another expensive lure, right? All this stuff is about getting your money. My channel is about make sure you're spending your money wisely when it comes to fishing. Don't waste it. Spend it on the things that are worthwhile, like the VMC, swap, the VMC snap swivel, but don't spend it on things that are not worth your while, like the like the Gary Yamamoto plastics. Yes, they're great. Yes, the action is awesome. Oh, yes, this and that and the other. They're also as fragile as glass. And every time you catch a fish, they completely rip, and you're going to have to get something new. Use pit bosses instead. I guarantee you'll catch just as many, if not more, fish on these than you would any of the Gary Yamamoto baits. Okay? I'm just being honest with you. The other thing that I bought was this. That's another thing that gets promoted over and over and over again is scents. Do I believe that they work? I think there's something to it uh, as in hiding the smells from your hands and stuff like that. But I buy things like this to keep my lures lubricated because they leave a film of like thin oil on the lube, on, the, on the, the lures. And especially on like my soft plastic swim baits that I use for salt water. I don't want to put anything that smells like anise and I don't want to put anything that smells like garlic, which are not things that fish eat to begin with, on my swim baits. So I just, I mean, this one is the only one that I could find that was shrimp scented because I figure if, if the scent thing does work, then I'm going to use something that smells natural to the fish anyway. So I just went ahead and bought the, the shrimp scented one. It just happened to be the Bang salt water formula, but it was the shrimp that I was after. But I use it just to keep my soft plastic swim baits from sticking together. This, this whole like um, bait fuel fiasco that was going around for a while, it's complete garbage. Don't go buy bait fuel. It's garbage. Okay, I haven't talked to a single person who went out and actually used it in the real world that was like, yeah, man, I caught more fish using bait fuel. They're all like, it looks like hand sanitizer without a smell. You know, so as soon as the, as soon as the lure hits the water, the scent's gone because it just, it's gone, right? It's not a gel or anything. So anyway, I just wanted to make this video because I've noticed lately, again, since it's a lull of the fishing season, all the super sponsor channels are doing is going around giving people shitty advice about how to fish and then giving bad advice to try to get people to spend money since they aren't fishing right now either 
because the weather sucks, okay? And if they're not on the water getting money from their sponsors because they're not able to go fish or catch a whole bunch of fish and then come to YouTube and show it, they're running clips of old catches that they caught because it's hot as balls and they're not catching fish, or they're getting here to try to get you to spend money so they can continue to make money year-round during the lull of the fishing season. So that's what's happening. And I've noticed it a lot lately, and it's bullshit. And what I don't want is I don't want the viewers of my channel to go see those other channels and then go out and run out and buy all this garbage that they're promoting that doesn't work for you, okay? Number one being, like I said at the beginning, the 65-pound braid. Don't bass fish with 65-pound braid. Don't. It's a dumb idea. Everybody who promotes it is stupid. It's, it's wrong, okay? It is flat out wrong. Don't do that. So no need to go change your braid if you're running 20 or 15 because that's what people are catching bull red fish that weigh 20 and 30 and 40 pounds on right now. It's 15 pound braid. Um, that's what I'm fishing with, okay? I have a surf fishing rod with 30 pound on it in case I happen to catch a shark. Other than that, I, my, my, my spinning reels, they have 15 pound on them, all right? And I haven't had any problem catching fish yet. So anyway, save your money, guys. Don't believe everything you see on YouTube from these sponsored channels. They're just trying to get you to spend your money. And most of the time, it's bad advice, it's wrong advice, and all you're going to do is come out having less money for it in the end. Tight lines.